Hello. In this video, I want to show you how to use the output from the VChat++ multi-scheduling feature in Weaves to create large-scale Monte Carlo simulations. So a short recap of the last video. So in the last video, we created 106 different schedules by using the multi-scheduling feature in VChat++. And the result of this multi-scheduling output was that this directory here and here we see the result from all 106 different versions. So here on the top you see the empty NGS files which were created and then you see all the scheduling files and additionally at the end you see here we also got a statistic CSV file which is basically a text file including a lot of statistic which we have used at the end of the last video to you to look at or to compare the schedules we have created based on metrics like number of station, number of observations and everything like this. But this time we want to create simulations so that we can really compare the schedules not only based on number of observations but also based on the, um, let's say, based on the estimates for the Earth orientation parameters or based on the accuracy of the station position estimates or things like that. So that's the whole idea. Okay, so first of all, let's start Weaves. So in order to start Weaves, you need a MATLAB version. So let's browse to the Weaves VLBI work directory and simply type Weaves in your command window to start Weaves. So I, put, I had already started it, so let's close it again so that you see it from scratch. It started by typing weaves. And now the first thing you want to do is when it started, you want to set the input files. So we want to use the NGS files that we have created in VChat++ as input for weaves. So what I will do now is I will simply copy the files and pass them into weaves. So let's open a new file browser in weaves and I want to copy them into weaves VLBI data and since it's these are schedules I will put them in weaves will buy data chat and I will create a new folder here called L R4 sim uh, so let's call it R4894 sim <laughs> okay and here I will put the 106 NGS files and now when we go to Weaves, we can go to File, Set Input File, and we can browse for sessions. And now we will browse for the sessions, and I've put them in Weaves VLBI Data Chat, and here should be the, here it is, R4894 SIM directory, and simply select all the 106 schedules, that we because we want to create simulations for all of those sets schedules. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to change the models a little bit. So first of all, we want to change the EUP models. So models EUP, we want to change it to finals. Because usually you, cre you create schedules for a time in the future and the finals EUP time series includes predictions. So we want to use the finals time series. And Maybe sometimes it's also useful but in models references, change the terrestrial reference frame and don't use the super, super, uh, the super station file that we, have, that we are maintaining with weaves, but maybe also simply use a simple text file for your station coordinates. So in principle, it does not really matter which models you are using in weaves for the simulations because you will use those models for calculating a theoretical delay and during the least squares adjustment you will use the exactly the same models to calculate observed minus computed so in the end it all becomes zero so i just change this here in order to avoid that weaves crashes or something bad happens but in the end it doesn't really matter which models you are using. So let's go to the estimates and let's have a look at the estimates that we are that we are estimating. So the troposphere 
parameters that we estimate are first of all the solid wet delay and gradients and we are estimating them as piecewise linear offsets the tropospheric solid wet delay we are estimating every 30 minutes with a little bit of constraint and the gradients we are estimating in a 180 minute interval and also we are adding constraints here and the clock we are also estimating as um, piecewise linear offsets is a 60 minutes interval and we additionally estimate one rate and one quadratic term for numeric reasons and also we add some estimates here so you can leave this here then the EUPs we want to estimate all five EUPs so that's okay we want to estimate them with very tight constraints so that's also okay let's have a look at the station coordinates so we want to introduce a non-net rotation, non-net translation um, datum definition and since these are only simulations we can say we want to use this NNR, NNT for all stations so we'll change this here and finally let's have a look at the source coordinates and for this demonstration I won't observe as I won't estimate sources so let's deselect this option here but in the end what you want to estimate and how often and all that this really depends on your session and how you want to do it so but in principle the default value should be fine I person personally if I'm interested in EUPs like for the um, in the case of the R4 session then I would deselect the estimation of source coordinates and yeah personally for simulations I always said that I want to have the non-net translation non-net rotation for all stations but that's up to you how you would like to do it more important or most important is how you want to simulate your observations so let's go to simulation parameters and here you have several options and you can either say use the same simulation parameters for all stations then you can um, fill them out directly in the graphic user interface or you can really have custom simulation parameters then you then you would need to provide a text file and then add for every station which simulation parameters should be used then you would change it and use the simulation parameters from a parameter file and then select the parameter file you want to use so I will show you where you can find them so they are located in Weaves, Weaves VLBI data turb where is it turb and here let's have a look at one of these turbulence files and here it's a very simple file it just lists all stations and it lists then the CN value which should be used and the rest of the tropospheric parameters it lists the, the clock parameters so how accurate is your clock and it also lists the white noise so that's one way to do it but then you would need to provide those lists and another way to do it would be or the way that we are going to do it is we are using the same parameters for all stations here now it's very likely that this will change in the near future because we are currently working on it but for now it looks like this so I will use a CN value of 1.8 for every station and the clock has an Allen standard deviation of 1 to the power of minus 14 seconds over 50 minutes and yeah we'll, we'll also add 30 picoseconds of white noise to every observations here I can select how many how many simulations I want to create for each schedule or for each input file so in usually I want to create 500 simulations because I usually run this Monte Carlo simulations overnight because as you will see later this is really the bottleneck at the moment for the whole um, for the whole process so this takes some time and usually I will just run it overnight and then it doesn't really matter if I create 100 or 500 simulations and I like to look at the repeatability values and that's why I'm going for these high numbers so if you're only interested in the mean formal errors then it's most likely also enough to just create 10 simulations or even 5 simulations and it should be good for you okay so as you will see later there are a lot of possibilities how to get your results so the simulation results and what I like to do is I like to 
um, provide the simulation results or sum them up in the statistics CSV file as well, so that I can then use the same statistics CSV file in VChat++ to select the schedule I want to, to use and to make the whole comparisons. So what I can do here is on the bottom, that's optional, you can do it, but you don't have to, you can select the past one of the statistics CSV files from your sessions. So my session was this one here. So that's the session I want to simulate now. And it's stored in under home programming out and then there's the code here. So let's browse to this statistics file. So it was under home programming out and then it was this one and here is the statistics file and I will insert the information here. Okay. Good. Then lo let's go to the run, to the run options. And that's the final point. Now we need to select the, the models we want to run. We want to run vinit, vmod, vsim and vlsm. And let's give it a name. I call it R4894 sim. We want to use parallel processing because we want to process all of the 106 schedules. And yeah, so usually, so let's, yeah, let's try how long it does it take. So, but yeah, usually run it overnight and they'll create 500 simulations per schedule. Let's reduce this number here a little bit. Now let's leave this number here, but only create five simulations, then it should be a lot faster. And basically that's all you have to select. And now let's run, let's run Weaves. So you can see here now in the command window that something is happening. So it's initializing everything. It runs Vmod. So it's um, estimate, uh, it's creating this theoretical de delay. And yeah. So usually this is really the process that I run overnight because especially if you run 500 simulations, then it will take a couple of hours. So let's see how long this takes now. Now it's already simulating the parameters. So it's, it's simulating the observations for the first sessions. And now it's already at the parameter estimation. So it already runs VLSM, you can see it popping up here from time to time, VLSM. And yeah. So currently I run this on a server and the server contains 33 cores. So it will maybe take one or two more minutes. But this gives us some time to talk about the result. So what do you end up with? So in the end, your your result is more or less, or there are many ways to get to, to see your result. So one way is, and we will see this, that you that the result is stored in the Weaves VLBI out directory. So if I go to this directory, what you get is Weaves VLBI out. You get one of the MAT files here, which is um, which is called exactly the, the same as you say it in, it in the graphical user interface. So mine will be called r4894 underscore sim dot mat. And this sim mat contains two tables and one table for the mean formal errors and one table for the repeatability values. And that's very easy access to get uh, the, the average mean formal errors or the repeatability values. And you can use these mat files in your or later on for your further investigation for your comparisons. So that's a very nice way to to get the results. And another option to get the results is by using the statistics CSV file. So as I said, or we have seen in the graphic user interface that in vSIM I have selected the path to the statistics CSV files in the graphical user interface. And Weaves will now create all the simulations and it will um, make the least squares adjustments, in our case only five times per schedule. And then 
it will sum the results up so it will create as it will calculate the mean formal errors and it will also calculate the repeatability values that you expect and then it will create a new statistics underscore sim dot csv file and you can use and you can select this statistics underscore sim csv files in vshed plus plus again in the statistics toolbox and then you can again simply compare the schedules not only based on the number of observations and number of scans but also based on the simulation parameters that you have yeah that, that you derive from weaves so that's the way I want to go and that's the way that I usually do it so when you end when you're finished you should get this file here okay so let's see how far are we here so this is still running so there's still a little bit more time left yeah what else can I talk about so nothing I will cut this down Okay, Vshed plus plus or okay, Weaves has finally finished. As you can see here, Weaves processing ends at some time. And let's have a look at the output again. So what is get here is so at the end it was still creating some V uh, VLSM output, and then it says VLSM is successfully finished the last time, and then it's summarizing all the results so we have only created five simulations per schedule or by per input file so it will then um, average this the results of the five simulations and it will create uh, it will estimate the mean formal errors and it will calculate um, the repeatability values so it will do this for all 106 versions and then here it will simply list you the variables that it found, like number of simulations, then also DUT1, you get also the unit here, it's in or microseconds, and polar motion and so on. And then most important, on the bottom here, you see the mean formal error per version. So for example, the version 001 had a mean formal error for DUT1 of 1.3, for polar motion of 19 or 26, micro arc seconds and these are the station coordinate the 3d station coordinate estimates in millimeters so you can either use these tables here now for the comparisons and simply copy them yeah additionally as i said earlier if we go now to weaves vlbi out you see that you have now a where is it? A r4894sim.mat file. So you can simply drop it, drag and drop it into weaves, and then you have these two variables, the table for the mean formal error and the table for the repeatability. And if you double click it, then you will see okay which version, how many simulations, and what the DUT1 uh, or what the estimates are and everything. So that's more or less if you want to use it further in your programming to, to compare them 
then you can simply do it like this. So simply copy the, the, the MAT file that is created and this will be out into your work uh, page and then you can use it again. Or you can, for example, use the summary command to again create this output like what are which variables showing, what is the unit of each variables and you can also display the mean from errors again and do your comparison based on that. That's one way but then you need to program a little bit more. Another way is as I said if you look at our output directory now, this was our output directory for from vshat++ you see that there is now additionally a statistics underscore sim file. And you can use this statistics underscore sim file in vshat++ again. So let's have a look at that. So for example, if I go to the statistics file again and remove the previous one, and now let's add, uh, let's add the new one. So it was this statistics underscore sim dot csv file. Okay, and as I said, as I've shown in the last video, here are the general statistics. Let's leave them for now. But you can now also see, have a look at the simulation statistics or at the simulation results. For example, you can have a look at the mean formal error. And the mean formal error, you can please display the mean formal error for X pole and Y pole, for example. And then you see, okay, version one had a mean formal error in X pole and Y pole of 19 and 27 you can always see them in the top right if you have an element and version 2 is a lot higher 27 44 so version 1 is a lot better than version 2. What you can do now is you can again as I have shown in the last video you can sort them according to the results here and this time you want to um, sort them by the polar motion estimates but we will start with the smallest formal error. So we'll give them both a weight of, of minus one. And now we will see that in this example, for example, the version 55 is the version with the lowest formal errors for polar motion in X and Y direction on average. And yeah, so, and you see that, the, yeah, that this is also one version with only 10,349 observations. So it's not it's not the, the, the schedule with the highest number of observations, which is the schedule with the best um, polar motion estimate, but it's one in the, yeah, one with more than average number of observations, but not the one with the, with the highest number of observations. And that's the whole reason why we are doing this um, simulations, because only based on things like number of observations or something, you can really say which schedule is the best one. So you need more sophisticated values or parameters like really create simulations or this. But of course, it correlates highly. So of course, the more observations you have, it's the better is, but too much observations would mean that the sky coverage is really suffering and then it's also not so good again. So it's tricky to tell which schedule is the best one without simulations. But with simulation is quite easy because you can really have a look at the polar motion estimates. For example, if you're interested in polar motion or if you're more interested in station coordinates, then simply display the average 3D station coordinates. Or if you are interested in station coordinates for one station, then simply show this one, like for example, Hadrao or yeah, whatever. So that's more or less up to you which one you want to display and what is your what are you most interested in and everything like this. Okay, let's have a little bit deeper look in this in this all because there are a couple of there are very very many interesting things here that you can see. For example if I select if I also display if subnetting is used or not, I can simply add subnetting to the list and then I will see that the stations with the lowest estimates and so the lowest mean formal errors for polar motion, the schedules are all using subnetting. So they are all using subnetting, they all have a red bar and the red bar is subnetting. And the interesting fact is that this is really true for all the good sessions. So all the good versions, they are all using subnetting and as soon as the subnet, they are not using subnetting anymore, 
their mean formal errors increase extremely high. Uh, so they, they increase a lot. So there is a big jump between the mean formal errors. They're here, they're pretty small, and later they're pretty big compared to, to before. So there's a big difference here, and all, all versions which come now, which have high mean formal errors for polar motion, they're all not using subnetting. So in this example, or for this schedule, subnetting was really the key to create a good schedule. So subnetting was really, really important here. And you can also maybe dig into which weight factor was the most important for use. You can enable all of them and then, or let's simply do it simpler, let's simply go to the weight factors directly and show all weight factors that you have used and maybe see if there is something yeah, that pops up. So for example, or if there's something which is highly correlated. So it, for now it doesn't seem like, but I've not really looked a lot into it. But there is really a lot that you can see from this comparison that you can try out and test. And as I've shown you, there are many, many multi, um, parameters that you can use in the multi-scheduling setup. And there are also many, many parameters that you can use in weaves, that you can use in weaves. So for example, in how to specify your simulations and what you want to estimate. And of course, all of this has an influence on your schedule. And therefore it's usually best to, sim to just simulate it. And then you, you know which one is the best one and then you can select it. One final note is if you now, for example, say uh, you've done everything, so you've done your best and you say, okay, for example, in my case, version 19 is the best one, then before you submit this version to the stations, please remove the version ID or the version number at the end of the files. So this can cause problems at the stations at other software packages. So it's best to rename them and simply remove this version number at the end and then you are safe. Okay, this was everything from my side. I hope it's now a little bit clearer how the Monte Carlo simulations with Vs work and how you can combine Vs and Vshed++ together to create this Monte Carlo simulations and how you can access the results afterwards to really do your science or your stuff or whatever you want to do. Okay, thanks for watching.